If you're here, it's probably because you're thinking about getting into snorkeling. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about different types of masks, the different types of fins that you can get, and some snorkeling techniques as well. So where do we start? I mean, I think that the first place to start is always to talk about what mask to buy. Now there's many, many different types of mask. This is the one that I tend to use. It is just a normal sort of snorkel mask. All of this is silicone, so it fits quite nicely. But one of the main things that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've got a good, good seal with this type of mask. And the mask, you should be able to just put it on your face and breathe in through your nose. And the mask should stay in place on your face without putting the straps on. So that's a normal, pretty much standard type of mask. Ones that you would normally get in a kit. This is a slightly better quality one, but I'll get into that in a bit. The next type is, again, same sort of mask. There's no divide in the middle of this one, so you actually get a bit of a sort of better view with it. But one of the good things with this one is there's a valve in the, in the front there. So if you've got a mustache or you've got a bit of a beard and, and you find that you get a lot of water in, that's designed for you to be able to breathe out through your nose which will release a lot of the water out from inside the mask. However, I personally don't like these masks because where the valve is, it's hard and you can't actually pinch your nose. And when I'm sort of diving down, I pinch my nose to pressurize. So, but if you're a beginner and you're just gonna be staying on the surface, then one of these masks is absolutely fine. The next mask is one of these full face masks. Now these are the ones that where you, it doesn't require a snorkel. If you hear that rattling around, it has a little, bore float in the top which stops any sort of water coming down into the mask and with these you have to literally strap them on from the back of the head like so and in on the inside here there's a there's two seals so there's a seal that divides your face from your from where your nose and mouth is now these are good if you're sort of new to snorkeling there is a bit of controversy of as to whether they are safe or not I think that if you are going to go out with one of these masks it's always best to have somebody with you just in case you get into any trouble but one of the things with these as well is you can actually breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth which when you've got the individual mask and snorkel you're not able to do that personally again these masks aren't the best for diving down so I tend not to use one of these myself I just tend to use my normal sort of full face mask. Snorkels wise, this is my one that I use pretty much all the time. It's got a silicone rubber mount, so it's just really comfortable in the mouth. It's got two valves on the bottom, so that when you're in the water, you can, and you get any sort of little bits of gargle or any sort of water in the pipe, you can just sort of blow it out. And I like this one as well, because it's got an open top. So if there's ever just that little bit of water just left in the bottom, you can put your hand over the top, blow out, and it will come out from underneath. This is a very, very similar setup to, to the previous snorkel. Um, it's got one valve in the bottom. It's got a flexible tube, so if you are going to be snorkeling with it, it's easier for you to sort of get situated as to where it should be on your head. This one has a closed top. So unlike the other one where you could put your hand over the top and clear out any extra water at the bottom, you wouldn't be able to do that with this one because it's closed at the top. As far as masks go, as I said, this is my sort of go-to and sometimes if, you, if you're just getting into it and you're not 100% sure whether you're you're going to enjoy snorkeling then don't buy a really expensive setup you can get a cheap one just until you realize whether you're going to actually do it or not but this wasn't overly expensive but I've actually had this for over 20 years and I still use it every week if you look after them and you wash them well they should last you a lifetime fins or flippers we call them fins so try not to call them flippers this is a closed heel. So because this is a closed heel, it literally just slips over your foot like a slipper would essentially. And there's not a huge amount of room for having any sort of boots underneath. So if you are gonna be snorkeling or anything and you wanna wear like boots underneath or wetsuit socks, then there are available as well. Ones with straps on the back so you can actually still wear boots on them. They don't fit as snugly, but you can, you can keep them on nice and tight with the straps. Here in the UK, it doesn't tend to, the water temperature doesn't tend to be warm enough 
to actually go in the water without wearing a wetsuit. There's another good reason why you should either wear a wetsuit or a rash vest. When snorkeling, you spend a huge amount of time with your face in the water and your back exposed to all the rays from the sun. And it doesn't matter whether you live in the UK or whether you live somewhere in hotter temperatures or anything like that. It's always best to keep your back covered to save you from getting any sort of skin damage on your back. It's quite surprising how quickly you can burn when you're in the sea and your back is exposed for that amount of time. One of the most important things as well, which I nearly forgot to mention, is one of these. Now this is a produce bag which you can get in supermarkets. The reason why this is one of the best things that you can have with you is because you can pick up any bits of plastic you might find on the beach or in the water. If we all sort of get into the habit of just sort of taking a little bit home with us each day that we go in the water, it's going to be a nicer environment for everyone and all the sea creatures. So let's start talking about the tips. Some of the things that I've picked up over the years with snorkeling. One of the main things is relax. When you're in the water, you want to sort of keep your keep your body fairly fairly relaxed. We don't want to be using fins and flipping crazy because you will just burn yourself out energy wise. But one of the hardest things and one of the things that you'll need to sort of get to grips with sooner rather than later is getting used to breathing through a snorkel with your face in water. Now, one of the good ways of doing that if you are a beginner is fill up your kitchen sink at home, put your mask on, put your snorkel on, put your face in the water and then actually just, just get used to breathing in and out through your mouth before you actually go into the sea. Swimming pools are another good way to practice as well. Anywhere where it's sort of a controlled environment is always gonna be more safe than going straight into the ocean for your first snorkel. One of the first things to get cold when you're in the water is normally your head. You're not used to having your face or head in the water for a length of time. So one good thing to have is always a hood. You don't necessarily need to wear it all the time. Um, this one's got a slight peak on it, so it's not the best for wearing a mask with it. If you're thinking about taking this up and, and you want to go in the water more often than sort of just in the summer, then a hood is definitely a must. Also, if you've got short hair or no hair, a hood's good to stop your head from getting sunburnt as well. Okay, so once you've started snorkeling and you've been doing it a while and you're sort of getting your confidence up, you might want to start thinking about diving under the surface. One of the first things to do is to make sure that you've mastered the ability to blow water out through your snorkel. Like I said, this one, this one does have two purge valves at the bottom, which means that the water should drain itself out anyway when you come up to the surface, but you just need to just have one sharp jet of air that will push the, push the water out of the top of the snorkel, and that should clear the air wave. If you want to start diving down and you're unsure of how to do this, one, practice. If not, take the snorkel out of your mouth and dive down without it. As I was saying, in the UK, wetsuits are very important. I do wear one all year round. In the winter months, I wear a 5-3, which means it's a 5 mil thickness on the chest and a 3 mil thickness on the legs and the arms. And then in the summer months, I wear a 3-2, which is a 3 mil thickness on the chest and a 2 mil thickness on the arms and legs. I have had a mixture of back zips and chest zips throughout the years, but I find for my own personal comfort, I prefer a back zip because they're easier to get out of. And when you've been in the sea for hours and you get out and you're exhausted, the last thing you want to do is wrestle yourself out of a wetsuit. Other than that, that's been my guide to snorkeling if you are new to it. The one thing that you'll find when you get into this is you will fall in love with the ocean and you'll actually be surprised actually how much you can see. So all my advice would be to you would be to get out there, stay in a shallow environment to just get used to it, practice in swimming pools, put your face in the kitchen sink at home, and eventually start venturing out deeper and deeper and deeper. Another thing which I think is worth mentioning as well, it's important to have a tow float. Now what this is, it's a inflatable, brightly coloured float that you would literally strap around your waist and have it behind you, floating on the surface for when you're actually swimming in open waters. This lets any boats know where you are, any fishermen that might be casting their reels into the water, it lets them know of your presence and it's just a safer thing to do. Especially if you're planning on snorkeling in sort of an open water area. But yeah, that's my guide to 
to snorkeling. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I make a lot of snorkeling videos and just sort of beach activities. And, and if you love Cornwall in the UK, I do a lot of videos based here because this is where I live. Don't forget to hit the like button as well because that helps the channel. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.